Hey, welcome to my channel. This is the second video of a series in which I'll show you how to build the WordPress theme from scratch. First and foremost, WordPress needs to be hosted on a server in order to work. Therefore, we need to install a tool like WAMP or Local by Flywheel to create a local hosting server. In case you prefer WAMP, then you can download it from their official website and install it on your machine. Then download a copy of WordPress from wordpress.org. Once downloaded, decompress the WordPress zip file and copy and paste it in the www folder created by default when you install WAMP. That done, you need to open WAMP and do some configuration. However, the configuration process of WordPress with WAMP might take some time, not to mention problems that can pop up out of nowhere. So instead, we can use a very simple tool that makes it easier to just focus on the theme development rather than worrying about anything else. This tool is called Local. That being said, go to localbyflywheel.com and download then install it. Once that done, open the app and hit the create a new site button. Choose a name for your site, then hit the advanced options drop down and then customize your domain name. Hit continue, fill the WordPress username and password fields and finally hit the add site button. Now, Local will do all the necessary work on its own. It will just take quite some time to finish. Once finished, you can visit your site. As you can see, even though the domain is .com, the site is still hosted only on your machine. We have also access to the admin panel using the username and password we defined earlier. And there we go, we are ready to start creating our theme. Right now, the website is running the 2020 theme, which is one of the four themes that are installed by default in every WordPress website. To check out the other themes, go to the dashboard, click on Appearance and then Themes. As you can see, these are the available themes. Each of them has the details about the author, description of the theme, tags, etc. To use a theme, we just simply click on the Activate button. That being said, if we want to create a theme, our theme should appear on this page, and to do that, we need to go to the location of the themes folder and create our own themes folder. Open local and right click on your website, then choose the show folder option. Go to app, public, WP content, themes, then create a folder and import it to your code editor. Technically speaking, a theme requires only two files to work, which are index.php and style.css. However, 
There are a lot of other files that are predefined by WordPress. And here's the list. That being said, let's create the index.php file. So that done, let's create the style.css file, which should contain the details about the theme and the CSS code, even though it's recommended to just provide the theme's information only within this file. Now, as I said earlier, technically we have a working theme that is recognizable by WordPress. So, if I go back to the themes section and refresh the page, the theme should show up. Now, as you can see, the other themes have a sort of cover that represents how they look. We can do the same with our theme. To do so, we need to create a 1200 by 900 pixels image, then we have to save it as PNG and name it screenshot. Now we just simply need to copy it in our themes folder. Now let's activate the theme and this is how it looks for now. So let's start by creating a folder that will hold the CSS files and create a style sheet with some code. Now if you think that we should import the CSS file through a link tag, well that's wrong. In WordPress, we need to import the CSS and JavaScript files dynamically through a PHP script. To do so, we need to create a PHP file and we have to name it functions. You can think of this file as the brain of the WordPress theme. The functions file is not only responsible for adding JavaScript and CSS, but it is also responsible for enabling functionalities on the dashboard in order for the admin to use to add some features on the front-end part of the site. More on that in the next videos. First off, let's create a function, and within its body, we need to call the WP in Q style hook.
This hook accepts five parameters. The first one is handle, which is basically the name of the style sheet. It doesn't need to have the same name as the CSS file though. The second parameter is a string containing the path to the CSS file. As its name suggests, the get template directory returns the path of the themes folder. The third parameter is dependencies. It refers to whether or not this style sheet depends on another one. The fourth parameter is the version of the style sheet. And finally, the last parameter specifies which type of media to load this style sheet in, such as all, screen, print, or handheld. Now, in order to trigger the load scripts function, we need to call the add action hook. The first parameter is the name of the action. The second one is the name of the function. And notice that both of the parameters are strings. Now, let's go to the web page and refresh it to see if the style sheet has been loaded or not. As you can see, the style sheet is still not loaded yet on the page. Well, that's because we didn't point to where exactly we want WordPress to put the link tag on the page. So, in order to do that, we need to open the index page and then call the WP head hook within the head section. And now, if I refresh the page, everything should be working as intended. To load JavaScript, we need to do almost the same thing. So, let's create a JavaScript file first, and then add some code to test. Now, we need to call the WP in script hook within the load scripts function. The first parameter is handle, which represents the name of the script. The second one represents the source of the JavaScript file. The third one represents the dependencies. Our JavaScript code doesn't depend on any other JavaScript files in order to work, so we'll just use an empty array. The fourth parameter is version. We can put a string containing the version, or we can skip it setting false instead. The last parameter tells if we want to load the JavaScript code at the beginning of the page or at its end. Now, if we refresh the page, we should be able to see the pop-up window. For more organized and cleaner code, WordPress provides an option to split it into smaller chunks. Let's create a header and a footer sections on the page.
Now we can split this page into a handful of parts. The first one is the header.php. This file must not only contain the code within the header tag, but every single tag starting from the doc type declaration until the closing header tag. Now we have the header.php file ready, but WordPress doesn't know where exactly to include it on the index page. Thus, to do that, we need to call the get header hook. Now, if I refresh the page, it should look the same as before. Same thing with the footer. We should create a footer.php file first, then cut the code from the footer and it must contain the body and HTML closing tags. And finally, we need to call the getfooter hook to tell WordPress that it should load the footer.php code in here. This should be it for this tutorial, make sure to subscribe and see you in the next part.